Imagine a world where everyone was whole and integrated, and we could see each other for who we really are, human and vulnerable. Imagine a world where fathers and mothers could see their children as they really are, creative and full of potential. Imagine a world where husbands and wives could see each other as they really are, vulnerable and a desire to be loved and accepted just as they are. Imagine a world where organizations and bosses could see their employees just as they really are, desire to be recognized and to do a good job. Imagine a world where we could see and listen to each other's heart and intention and not just the words that they say. So for example, when my aging mother calls and sarcastically says, who is this, my long lost daughter who never calls? What if I chose to hear her heart instead, which is, hi, baby girl, I love you and miss you. I really love speaking to you, and I wish you would call more often. Imagine the beauty that the world we would see, and imagine what would happen to relationships. So why doesn't this happen? Dysfunction and pain. Dysfunction blocks us from experiencing true joy and beauty in life. We live in a world that's obsessed with happiness, aren't we? The pursuit of happiness. We all talk about um, uh, how wonderful it is to be happy. But I think happiness is really a cheap substitute for what we all desire, which I think is true joy and beauty. Especially in Asian culture, we're taught from very young, don't ever share your dirty laundry. You can't talk about divorce, abuse, pain, God forbid, failure. Don't ever talk about failure, right? And instead, what do we do? We put on masks, and we hide behind walls, and pretend that everything is great and perfect. And that seems all good and fine, but the problem is that dysfunction creates filters that cloud how we see each other. And for some of us, that dysfunction looks like walls that actually prevent us from having intimate relationships with others. Others call these walls survival. So imagine a world now where these filters were removed and we could really just see each other for who we are and the beauty that we would see in the world. I think in this world, people would be raw and vulnerable and human, and I think that they would be seen and valued and heard. And I think in this world, people would know what their purpose is and have the power to pursue meaning. So if you could choose to live in this world, which is like heaven on earth, would you be willing to do what it takes to get there? Some of you may be thinking, sure, but asking your hearts, is this even possible? I believe it is, and I've dedicated my life to helping down, tear down walls and masks so that we could all experience true joy and fulfillment in life. But some of you are not convinced, so I'm going to tell you a story. But before I tell you the story, um, do you all have paper and pencil? So can you please take 30 seconds to just draw a picture of a low point in your life? This is just for you, so you don't have to show anyone. So please just draw a picture of a low point. I'll give you 30 seconds. So now this little girl uh, was from Brooklyn, New York, and she had two older brothers who she idolized. And in her mind, she had a perfect family, and she was very proud of this perfect family. Um, unfortunately, the reality was quite different because her home was extremely dysfunctional and full of violence, pain, and sadness. Her father had anger issues and would often physically abuse her mother. And the tables would be turned upside down on a regular basis and pots and pans flying everywhere. Her two brothers joined gangs when she was six years old. And she would watch over the years as her brothers came home with broken noses, um, and would physically abuse her on almost a daily basis. Uh, and even though she would have bruises, she would actually um, still idolize her brothers, and secretly she wanted to be a gangster too so she could spend more time with them. One day, when she was, um, it was about 9 p.m. at night, she received a phone call, and um, her brother had been shot. It was the hospital. And 
uh, something inside of her shifted when that happened. And uh, she didn't, there was no details given. Fortunately for him, the bullet actually went through his arm, landed in his hip, and he was actually walked away with barely a scratch. And she made a choice, and something shifted, and she decided she no longer wanted to live in fear of abuse, but she wanted to get away. And all she could do was thinking about how she could get away. And she, so she diverted her attention to school and academics, and she focused on how she could get out. So by accident, she ended up getting accepted to an Ivy League school. And then um, when she was 18, she was able to go away and leave the country. And when she did that, she would never return home again. The problem is, is that she thought she had found this escape, but when she got there, she was a total outcast because everyone around her was so shiny. They seemed perfect. They had these great families. They had money. They had been to boarding school. And here she was. So she did the only things that she thought she could do. So her walls were already built up. Those had been built up from childhood because she didn't want to be hurt anymore, so that was fine. So now she went and found the shiniest mask that she could find. And the mask that she chose to put on was the mask of accomplishment. And on the minute she spent the rest of her life shining this mask of accomplishments. She, when she worked at Citibank, she got multiple promotions. She worked really hard. Um, she was offered to be made one of the youngest vice presidents, which she declined to instead get an MBA from Harvard Business School. She joined one of the leading consulting firms in the world. She was very shiny now. Um, the problem was that people could not see that how the dysfunction had impacted her and how she had hurt many people along her journey and how she had driven her team so intensely that she had no joy in the work that she did. And so um, she was actually then offered um, the job of a lifetime, you know, the things that MBAs dream about. She was offered to be the uh, mountain management team of a global hedge fund and was offered to make millions. And then she had a choice. Was that she going to choose uh, just to have more shininess and more accomplishments? And she decided, could I find something more? Could there be meaning? And I just gave it away. But <laughs> as many of you have guessed, this uh, story is my story. And this is, I was the little girl. So faced with this choice, um, I decided to pursue meaning and gave up everything to choose to start a company focus on transforming the world by developing leaders. But before I could do that, I had to start by leading myself. I had to know who I was. And so in that journey, one of my, um, you know, when you go to business school, you're taught to do business plan and all this kind of stuff. So instead of doing that, I was, I was the worst MBA. So instead, I spent the first three months crying a lot. And then I um, asked one of my mentors to do an assessment of me. And this is actually the picture that I drew of the highs and low points in my life. And when he looked at that picture, he had done this assessment thousands of times before. He said, do you know that you have one of the most dysfunctional childhoods of anyone I've ever met? And you actually are a gangster inside. <laughs> um, I was shocked by what he said. I thought that all of my years of wearing my mask had actually hidden all of the ugliness inside. And so I felt naked and exposed. So then, what was I to do with this function? So I started on a journey of trying to understand what it was, why I was who I was, where did I come from, and who do I choose to be? In that journey, um, I recognized that I wanted to make a choice to fight through that dysfunction because it was now, it, the charade was over, the mask was off. He could see me. So I had to go inside of myself and start to pull out all the compartments of pain that had built up over my life. I pulled out the first compartment um, of pain, which was the one of my father's abuse. And when I pulled out from that compartment, I actually had to relive the emotions that I felt. Um, so I remembered being eight years old, sitting on my mom's bed. She had this blue velvet covers as she um, cried and she apologized for wanting to run away. And I remember being eight years old again, begging her not to leave. So now that this compartment was open, what was I supposed to do with it? Then I made a choice to start a journey of reconciliation. So I called my father and I said, explain what happened and the impact that um, 
his choices had made on me. He listened. And at this point in his life, this is now many years later, he's had one of the most amazing transformations of anyone I've ever met. He's one of my heroes. Um, but that's another story. So when I called him, he listened, and he said, uh, I don't think he could fully understand and accept all the things that I had said, and he don't think he thought it was that bad. And I realized that he may not be emotionally healthy enough to receive the things that I was saying, and that's okay. I had to accept where he was and that this healing was more for me than for him. So one compartment cleared. I then reached him, and I found another compartment. And this was the compartment of beauty. I called up one of my brothers, and um, he was now a very loving father with two beautiful children, and um, his gangster days were like long gone. And, and even our, but our relationship was still pretty tense, and even though he was not physically hurting me uh, or threatening to beat me up, it had turned into verbal abuse. And so it was always a tense relationship with a lot of insecurity and issues. So this was one of the most difficult conversations I've ever had in my life. It took me actually three months to even garner the courage to talk to him. And this was in early 2009, which is about two and a half, three years ago. And remember, at this point, I was really shiny. Um, so I called and um, I asked if we could talk. We sat down and I said, um, hmm. uh, uh, I, studied, I studied a lot. I don't normally stutter that much. And um, he said, what? What do you want? I said, why are you being so stupid? And I said, well, I, I just need to tell you something. Uh, and I shared the impact of what he had ha said. And I said, I didn't realize it at the time, but I guess, you know, remember that thing you used to call me when we were young? He was like, what, ugly? I said, yeah, that. He said, well, we're just kids. I said, yeah, I know, but um, I didn't realize how much it had impacted me. And um, can you please tell me today what you find beautiful in me? And then <laughs> I ducked and I braced myself. Um, my heart was pounding because what if he said, you're still ugly, <laughs> right? I, 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 don't, I didn't know what he was going to say. I didn't know what to, um, what to expect. But what he said shocked me. He looked at me and he had tears in his eyes and he said, that's so easy. You have one of the most beautiful hearts of anyone that I know. Our other brother has a beautiful heart also. But yours is different. Yours is the kind that wants to help people. And you've been like that since you were a child. One more compartment cleared. Our relationship has never been the same. So why do I share these stories with you? And what does this have to do with the world that we all imagined? Everything. Everything. You see, because all of us have pain and dysfunction in our lives, and they pile up. And what happens is they pile up and create barriers and walls between the authentic you and the authentic me. For some of us, it takes the form of words and actions, insecurity, you think you're hiding it, and you think it's covered inside. But for some random reason, you'll snap at people. Some of it comes out in coldness, where you have the inability to actually connect authentically with another human being and experience true intimacy. For other people, it's denial. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. And it really prevents us from experiencing true joy and beauty in life. So it was not a really easy journey for me to start um, to re reconcile with dysfunction. It's not cool to talk about your pain. But the moment that I chose to do that, something amazing started to happen. Um, as I started to articulate this vision for the company and the world and the impact that we wanted to make in the world, people started to come. I had people start to connect because they could see the vulnerable me and connect and want to be attracted to that. I had people who worked for me for free, and I thought the most irrational thing I've ever heard of. I had partners from around the world who said, I don't know, I heard about you and I want to work with you. And I think they actually just really did want to work with me and not with what we could do or the success or the achievement that would come with that. My family relationships have been reconciled. My brothers have the freedom to tell me they love me. So now, imagine a world where all of us 
could be whole and integrated. Because what happens with the brokenness is that you're actually not whole. And we walk around with broken pieces. And it's only the moment that we accept and see the dysfunction can we start to piece them back together one by one. And it's a journey. For me, it required conscious choice because I could have chosen to run away, which was the seemingly easier thing to do. It took a lot of courage because it is terrifying to go back into these compartments of pain that we think we've so nicely tucked away inside of us. And it took faith, me, um, in Jesus Christ. And to be honest, I don't think that I would have been able to go through that journey without God's grace in my life. So I guess my challenge when I think about this world and what's happened with Facebook and with Avatar, our world is getting more and more dehumanized. We don't even have to look like ourselves on on Facebook. We We can Photoshop away. Avatars, we can create a whole new identity for ourselves and have a new name. And so we're we're creating more and more walls around us. But if there was one thing to pursue in life, if it could lead to healing, reconciliation, and meaning, wouldn't this be at the top of the list? Please take a look at the pieces of paper that you have. Would you be willing to make the choice and have the courage today to open up your compartment of pain and start on this journey? Thank you.